why is he hanging around Puffy and L? I don't know. I never heard of him trying to be in the rap world. Him and that dude Vante Sweet are both gay. You can look at the pictures that they taking together. Look at this picture with these two. Those niggas are zesty. You know that he would hire these like sex workers and like they would have you know sex with her or whatever and he would watch and tell them what to do. But I'm sure they're gonna be shedding up Little Rod real soon. They're gonna be giving up some money to Little Rod real soon for him to go away. So I, I gotta ask, when when you speak your truth, does that make you not wanna actually speak out and actually keep it as real as you kept it in these interviews? There have been days where I thought to myself, maybe it's just too much trouble. Oh. And then I remember, That's my fucking purpose. Diddy's been in some serious hot water lately. Like we're talking lawsuits piling up left, right, and center. And Young Miami's name has been right next to Diddy's. She's been buzzing with some seriously spicy gossip about Diddy's wild adventures in the celeb scene. And hold on to your hats, cause she kinda let slip a name you wouldn't expect to be tangled up with Diddy, Cuba Gooding Jr. Turns out he might have been helping Diddy plan all of his weird activities. So first off, a producer from his album dropped some heavy accusations, sending shockwaves through the industry. And now, the producer of his latest album, Off the Grid, is taking him to court for a jaw-dropping $30 million. Rodney Lil Rod Jones, a producer on Com's latest album, spilled the tea in a lawsuit filed recently. In the lawsuit, it's claimed that Mr. Jones bunked with Combs from September 2022 to September 2023, while helping whip up tunes for the rapper's love album. Plus, he clocked in quite a few weeks chilling on Diddy's yacht. But here's where it gets wild. The suit spills the tea that Mr. Jones wasn't just mixing beats. Nope, he was allegedly front row center for a a whole lot more. Think hundreds of hours of recording where Combs and his entourage supposedly got up to some shady business. According to Lil Rod, Diddy ain't playing nice. He's alleging some seriously shady stuff went down, involving pressure, inappropriate touching, and even getting tangled up in some unsavory situations with ladies of the night. Now picture this, a world where Diddy feels supreme, pulling strings left and right with cash flowing like water and power moves galore. Lil Rod claims he got stiffed out of over 50 grand for his hard work on the album and Get this, he paints a picture of a music scene where messed up relationships are the norm, with Diddy allegedly trying to drag him into the chaos. The suit suggests Lil Rod has got the receipts, claiming he's got irrefutable evidence of everything from drug dealing, yeah, ecstasy and cocaine, to some seriously sketchy stuff with firearms, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. The suit also accuses Combs of serving up spiked drinks to minors and sex workers at his cribs in California and Florida. But Lil Rod ain't throwing shade at Diddy alone. Oh no, he's pointing fingers at the whole crew. From heavy hitters in the music game like Universal Music Group's CEO to Diddy's right-hand woman and even his own son Justin, they're all named in the lawsuit. And when Lil Rod tried to speak up, he claimed he was shut down with a dismissive, you know Sean will be Sean from Com's chief of staff. While working alongside Diddy, Jones stumbled into a world that went way beyond his producer duties. Now let's talk about Jones's star-studded encounters. Working on the award-winning Love album, he rubbed shoulders with some of Diddy's famous pals. But hold on to your hats. It wasn't all glitz and glam, especially with Cuba Gooding Jr. Yeah, the Oscar winner himself. Jones spills the tea, alleging Gooding Jr. got uncomfortably handsy, touching and groping him in places no one wants to be touched. And guess who else gets dragged into the drama? Young Miami herself. She's all over Lil Rod's lawsuit, with claims of getting high with Diddy on Thanksgiving back in 2022. Lil Rod even brings up Young Miami's cousin, alleging they were both chilling at Diddy's Miami pad. Now, Diddy's lawyer is saying that Lil Rod is nothing but a liar. Lil Rod Rod is nothing more than a liar who filed a $30 million lawsuit shamelessly looking for an undeserved payday. His reckless name dropping about events that are pure fiction and simply did not happen is nothing more than a transparent attempt to garner headlines. We have overwhelming, indisputable proof that his claims are complete lies. Our attempts to share this proof with Mr. Jones's attorney, Tyrone Blackburn, have been ignored as Mr. Blackburn refuses to return our calls. We will address these outlandish allegations in court and take all appropriate action against those who make them. But he's not stopping anytime soon. Now here's the twist. He also threw Gooding Jr.'s name into the mix, shifting the spotlight away from himself and onto Diddy. The lawsuit stated that Gooding began touching, groping, and fondling Mr. Jones's legs, his upper inner thighs near his groin, the small of his back near his buttocks, and his shoulders. According to Mr. Jones, he was extremely uncomfortable and proceeded to lean away from Mr. Gooding Jr. He rejected his advances, and Mr. Gooding Jr. did not stop until Mr. Jones forcibly pushed him away. The lawsuit described Gooding Jr as a 
relevant actor who has fallen from grace due to several sexual assault lawsuits and a recent guilty plea for S.A. His alleged actions were described as willful, wanton, and malicious. At all relevant times, Mr. Gooding Jr. acted with conscious disregard for plaintiff's rights and feelings, acted with the knowledge of or with reckless disregard for the fact that his conduct was certain to cause injury and or humiliation to plaintiff, and intended to cause fear, physical injury, and or pain and suffering to plaintiff. Now let's switch gears and dive into Cuba Gooding Jr.'s roller coaster journey in Hollywood. His story isn't your typical Hollywood fairy tale? Nope, far from it. While Hollywood big shots might have put a dent in his fame, let's not forget Gooding Jr. played a part in his own downfall. Back in the late 90s and early 2000s, he was on fire with roles in TV hits and blockbuster movies, earning an Oscar along the way. But then, things took a nosedive. Allegations from several women surfaced, hitting headlines and tarnishing his career. Fast forward to June 2019, and he's caught up in a bar incident in NYC. The situation escalated when prosecutors revealed allegations from 14 women across the U.S., dating back to 2001. Now he's facing misdemeanor charges for alleged groping incidents in Manhattan. But here's where it gets really interesting. The New York Supreme Court kicks off proceedings under the Adult Survivors Act, giving people a shot at bringing civil claims for past misconduct. It's been quite the roller coaster ride for him, with legal hurdles and controversies aplenty. Back in 2013, he managed to sidestep a trial by settling with a woman who accused him dating back a decade. But that's just scratching the surface. In 2018, another woman accused him of forcing a kiss on her while she was working at a nightclub. He copped a plea for that one. Then, in 2019, yet another woman accused him of getting handsy at a rooftop bar without her consent. Now, both these women are seeking damages, aiming to compensate for the assault, lost earnings, and the mental and physical pain they endured. Gooding's spokesperson has been tight-lipped about it all, but he managed to dodge a jail time for both incidents, getting slapped with six months of counseling instead. But hold up, Diddy's got his own mess to deal with. Like the fact that the feds just raided his house, federal agents swarmed Diddy's Beverly Hills mansion, and it was a scene straight out of an action movie. Homeland Security is leading the charge, with choppers buzzing overhead, cops on the scene, and guns drawn as they meticulously comb through the lavish property. And guess where all this drama is unfolding? Right here in Holmby Hills, where swanky mansions line the streets. The air is thick with tension as choppers swirl above and feds team up with local cops, creating a spectacle that's hard to miss. Residents are spilling the tea about wild parties, mysterious black cars, and VIPs coming and going like it's the hottest club in town. But wait, there's more. The chopper cam captures it all. The SWAT rides, agents in tactical vests, and individuals in cuffs being led away from one of these mega cribs. Sources speaking to NBC News reveal that federal agents are executing search warrants, delving into serious allegations ranging from drug-related offenses to worse, all allegedly tied to Diddy. But here's the kicker. Diddy himself isn't even in town. Insider sources spill the beans that he's chilling in Miami while this entire saga unfolds. And to add to the intrigue, his phones were reportedly seized before he jetted off to the Bahamas. Now guess who was spotted in sunny South Beach over Easter weekend? None other than Cuba Gooding Jr. himself, soaking up the Florida sun amidst a backdrop of ongoing federal investigations. Talk about interesting timing, especially considering his alleged connection to Diddy. TMZ managed to snag a photo of Cuba cruising around South Beach on the back of a golf cart with two unidentified dudes up front. Sporting his shades and looking as relaxed as ever, Cuba seemed to be enjoying the festive vibes of the Sunshine State while scrolling through his phone. Now, why might Cuba's presence in South Florida turn a few heads? Well, he and Diddy were recently named co-defendants in that lawsuit. With everything that's gone down with Diddy since that lawsuit dropped earlier this year, Cuba's sudden appearance in Miami is definitely raising eyebrows. But here's the kicker. Cuba hasn't been seen hanging out with Diddy during his time in Florida. And as for those allegations in Rodney's lawsuit, Cuba's been mum about it all, along with anything Diddy related. As for Diddy himself, he's been making public appearances in Miami, despite the federal sex trafficking probe hanging over his head. Denying all allegations in multiple civil suits, Diddy seems to be taking it all in stride. And as far as the feds go, he hasn't been arrested or charged with any crime. And the weird relationship between the two doesn't stop there. Even Reggie Wright Jr. talked about it. He mentioned that if the allegations about them were true, he could see it happening, particularly referencing the photo of Lil Rod and Cuba hugging in the studio, which he described as appearing zesty. That picture that they have, that he, he supplied to them with them hugging, it did look awfully zesty, huh? Yeah, I saw that particular interview or statement. That picture 
of Little Rod and and Mr. Cuban Gooding hugging in, in the studio. If, if 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 Cuban wasn't drunk that particular day, then yeah, man, man. But you know, Holly got guys from Hollywood is, is weird. Then he went on about how Hollywood's all wild and crazy, with people doing some questionable stuff. He straight up said he believed the allegations, comparing them to other scandals in Hollywood. Y'all been hearing about it. Y'all come over here to bomb first. I've been telling y'all about them. Which one of them? You know, other than like Cube or Denzel or stuff like that. Haven't we heard this gay smut stuff on? They all got some baggage. I mean, my boy Terry Crews, saying how he let him in. Ain't nobody gonna let a man grab on your nuts unless you done heard that it happened before. Now, even rappers like 50 Cent are calling him out for supposedly wild parties filled with young guys spilling all about their escapades. Even Usher hinted at being around these shindigs, talking about the lavish lifestyle without going into specifics. He's in the 90s, do you understand what that's like? Puffy's place was like just filled with chicks and orging like nonstop, right? No, nah, not really. Come I mean, on. but did I, hey, it was curious. I got a chance to see some things. Yeah. Usher's journey in the limelight began in the Big Apple, rubbing shoulders with none other than Puff Daddy himself. They were practically like brothers, wrestling over frosted flakes and all. Puff took Usher under his wing, introducing him to the glitz and glam of the industry. Yeah, but you were 13, what were you I seeing? I went there to see the lifestyle. Right. And, and I saw it. And it was, and it was, <laughs> but I don't know if I could indulge and understand what I was even looking at. It was, it was pretty wild. Was, so nobody tried to. But it wasn't just about the parties. You know, and I think that he was just trying to show me the lifestyle. However, that's not what I was there for. I was there because I wanted a career, man. So we would fight, we would tussle. <laughs> More than often, I think Puffy would say, man, you gotta chill, like you're just a little bit too intense. You know, you gotta relax. Like, yo, man, I'm here to work, man. I ain't saying in a week. I mean, I'm 13 years old, like banging on this man as though, <laughs> you know, I am the manager, I am the spokesperson for Usher. Puff also played a big role in Usher's career, stepping in to save the day when things got rocky with his label. And let's not forget Usher's musical prowess, with nine chart-topping hits on the Billboard Hot 100 and a Grammy-winning album under his belt. He's a force to be reckoned with, but he was still too young for what he saw back in the day. You're gonna make me a priority too. I'm not here to party with you. I don't wanna go to the clubs. I'm, matter of fact, I'm too young to even be in here. Why you got me in clubs? I think as a kid, I realized, hey, look, that's not my ring, that's not my moment, that's not my bottle, that's not my drink, that's not my celebration. However, amidst all the success, rumors swirl about Diddy possibly passing on an STD to Usher during his teenage years. But let's set the record straight. There's no concrete evidence to support these claims. As for Usher, he's been entangled in his own legal battles with accusations of transmitting herpes to several individuals. But he's denied these allegations, often opting to settle things out of court. A fan accused Usher of giving her an STD post-concert. I feel that my rights were violated. I'm speaking out today on behalf of myself and others, some of whom are positive and are embarrassed to speak out publicly. I am doing this so that he does not do this to anyone else. The court actually sided with the woman, claiming Usher knew about his condition, but still got busy. And it's not just Usher, a whole bunch of stars had their share of dealings with Diddy, giving rise to what's now famously known as Puffy Flavor Camp. L.A. Reid, the mastermind behind this setup, sent artists there to, uh, learn. Diddy's no stranger to legal tussles, from a nightclub shootout back in 99 to a squabble with his son's football coach in 2015. People love to whisper about Diddy's influence over Usher, hinting at potential coercion into to sketchy dealings or some downright bizarre fixations. So let's dive into the Diddy Bieber saga, shall we? Back in the day, Justin Bieber was like Usher's mini-me, but things got a bit shady when he started hanging with Diddy. Justin, he's in, you ever seen the movie 48 Hours? Right now he's having 48 Hours with Diddy, him and his boy. Um, they're having the times of their lives, like, 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 you know, where we hanging out and what we doing, um, we, we can't really disclose, but, um, it's definitely a 15 year old's dream. Um, you know, I, I, I have been given custody of him. You know, he yeah. signed to Usher. I'm signed to Usher. I, I had legal guardianship of Usher when, when you know, he, he did his first album. I did yes. Usher's first album. I don't really, I don't have legal guardianship of him, but for the next 48 hours, he's with me. So, um, and yeah, and, um, and, and, yeah, and, and we gonna go full, buck full crazy. 
Word on the street is Diddy went all out for the Biebs, showering him with lavish gifts like fancy cars and even dropping hints about a mansion when he hit the big 18. But hold up, Justin was just 15 at the time. Yeah, you do the math. While we can't say for sure what was really going on, it's definitely got people raising their eyebrows about Diddy's motives. No one ever knew that when Justin Bieber was singing this song, he was actually exposing everything that he had to go through as a child in order to become the star that he is today, which is exactly why when he recently linked up with Diddy, he was no longer trusted. Clearly, there's more to this tale than meets the eye. Now, a new video of Bieber and Diddy is circulating the internet, and it's got people even more weirded out. So you can see that they exchange a hug and some muffled words drowned out by the street noise. Then things get kind of weird. Diddy leans in, probably dropping some serious knowledge, but Bieber's not vibing with it. You can see him subtly shaking his head, but then Diddy's hand starts doing this awkward patting thing on Bieber's chest, like he was checking for a wire or something. Yeah, Diddy was definitely hiding something. If this is what they were doing to Justin Bieber on TV, I can't imagine what he had to endure behind the scenes. And everyone is starting to see just how messed up this really is. Is. Even rapper Fabulous has his reservations about certain industry parties, feeling like something's off. On his Instagram stories, he wrote, You ever got peer pressured into going to the afties? You really want to go home or back to the room, but you don't want to be the turn down to the turn up. Then he wrote, I told Diddy I was going to the bathroom and slid once. It was 7 a.m. and he was still turned. And let's not forget DaBaby, who spilled the tea about feeling uneasy at one of Diddy's parties. She, uh, I was at a party at Diddy Crib in, in L.A. This was... Uh, uh, this was this was the beginning of of 2020 you know what i mean and, uh did he have he had put everybody else out the crib like the the influx of people he had put them out but he had he had uh he had took a, a liking to me in particular around the time man it was really you know what i mean like putting his arm around me right so he had put majority of the people out, but he allowed me to stay in there. And Diddy's ex, Gina Hewing, a former model who dated him, claims she went through some serious stuff. You've heard about Cassie suing Diddy, right? Well, turns out she's not the only one dealing with the fallout from being involved with him. Um, we was upstairs and he, he had like, we were in his closet and he like pushed me and I fell to the ground. And, um, and then he got, he like stood over me so I was like laying on my back and he stood over me and he started like punching me like this. Like he avoided my face, but he like started punching me like on the side of the, my head and I was just like covering my face. And um, he did that, he did that. And then, and then after he got done doing that, he like, cause he was standing, his legs were like stay in between me. So he like, he like stomped on my stomach like really hard and I like took the wind out of my breath I couldn't even I couldn't breathe and he kept but he kept hitting me and I was like pleading to him like can you just can you stop According to her, things took a dark turn, leaving her with serious injuries and a frightening experience. But wait, there's more. Gina's ride with Diddy didn't end there. She's dishing out even more shocking details, from Diddy allegedly offering her cash to terminate a pregnancy to another shocking abortion. And Miami isn't staying silent either. She's allegedly teaming up with 50 Cent for a documentary. They're exposing Diddy's alleged actions for the world to see. And if that's not enough, there's even more drama with a former male escort spilling major tea about his encounters with Diddy and Cassie. But sadly, it doesn't stop there. There are more victims here, and we're just scratching the surface. It's like we've opened Pandora's box when we started talking about Diddy and his dark side. Back in 2018, a former male escort named Jonathan Audie dropped some major bombshells in a police video claiming he was basically held captive by Diddy and Cassie. Jonathan spilled serious tea, alleging multiple encounters with Diddy and Cassie, with tapes of these encounters supposedly floating around. Mm. I had sex with Cassie and Sean. Basically, he would uh, he would masturbate and tell me what to do with Cassie. I had like 15 encounters, and I heard lots of business. Cause what they would do is Sean talks a lot on the on the phone and on the TV with people and stuff. And I would be in the I was like a sex slave. Okay, for them that's what I was. That's all. All right. Um, I caught herpes, and I came back and I sued him for the herpes and won. But they didn't, did, 
Mark Eros and Ben Mercedes were his attorneys, okay? And Christopher Leons here was my attorney. They asked me to turn in that, which was the video recording, and I did so. They gave it back to me accidentally, and it's possible I, I threw everything out, it's possible I can produce a copy. Yeah, it's possible. I'm not sure. But here's where things get even crazier. Nobody really knows what happened to Jonathan. Some say he might have passed away, but there's no solid info. Fast forward to now, with Cassie and others accusing Diddy of assault, and it seems like Jonathan's claims are getting a second look. Do you know Sean Combs? Puff Daddy? Yeah. P. Diddy, whatever he called himself. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. Yeah, he's part of what's called the Boule. The, the Boule is a branch of the Illuminati. Okay. It's the black people. But this drama isn't just recent gossip. Jonathan talked about it back in 2018, long before Diddy's current troubles came to light. And then there was Cassie's lawsuit against Diddy, alleging some pretty disturbing stuff. She really pulled back the curtain on her relationship with Diddy, painting a picture of control, hurt, and pain. It was all just too much to handle. Cassie spoke up on behalf of herself and for the benefit of other women who faced violence and abuse in their relationships. With the expiration of New York's Adult Survivors Act fast approaching, she felt it was time to speak up and break her silence. Cassie went full throttle legal on Diddy, dragging him to court in New York with some seriously damning accusations. According to her, Diddy allegedly put his hands on her multiple times and she didn't hold back on the details. From being pressured into dreadful situations with other guys while Diddy watched to enduring serious beatings, Cassie laid it all out. Diddy's lawyer fired back, claiming Cassie was just after Diddy's cash. She threw around demands for a whopping 30 million bucks, threatening to spill the tea in a tell-all book if she didn't get her way. But Cassie's lawyers didn't back down, insisting she turned down a hefty payout from Diddy to keep her mouth shut. And if that's not enough drama for you, Diddy's caught the eye of the NYPD, landing himself in hot water. Cassie and Diddy's roller coaster romance may have ended back in 2018, but this lawsuit's dredging up some seriously dark stuff. And now she might even be teaming up with the feds to take Diddy down. Diddy isn't the only one being exposed. These lawsuits are also helping take down everyone who ever worked with him. And it seems like that list is getting pretty long. Is there anyone who didn't help Diddy in his messed up plans. One thing's for sure, they're all going down. If you like this video, make sure you watch this next one too.